Hey, what's going on with shipping? Sal Mercagliano here. I want to give you a fresh update on the motor vessel Dolly this morning, uh, what has transpired overnight and what we're learning about the vessel. As you know, the Dolly was outbound yesterday morning early out of Baltimore when the ship lost power, struck the southern piling of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Six people are presumed dead. At this time, efforts are still underway to locate the bodies, and the sh it has shifted from a rescue to a recovery operation. But I want to give you some imagery and some ideas of what's going on with the vessel right now and some background for the Port of Baltimore, what we can expect. So just a couple of images of the Port of Baltimore. These are coming from the BBC. Uh, you can see Dolly with the bridge actually hanging over the bow of the vessel. Uh, massive damage to the forward part of the ship. Uh, the ship has a containment boom around it to ensure that there's not any oil or fuel leakage around it. Parts of the front container stack have collapsed. The ship is carrying about 4,700 containers on board. It's rated for 10,000 TEU. Those are 20-foot equivalent units, but most of these containers on board are 40-foot equivalent units, equal to two TEUs. The smaller containers tend to be carried forward. Uh, they also tend to be the lightest, usually empty containers, and some containers have toppled into the water, and we've got a partial stack collapse. This is the port side of Dolly. You'll notice that the port anchor is down. Uh, when initial images were shown of this, that anchor was leading back aft almost directly. That indicated that they had dropped the anchor early and it had dragged along. If they had just dropped it here, it would be straight up and down, and it's not. The damage to the bow is substantial. Uh, this vessel is going to require repairs for it's going to be able to sail. Plus, we don't know the damage below the waterline. I would assume that Coast Guard ship and classification inspectors are on board uh, assessing the vessel as we speak. And then just the last image here showing uh, the dolly uh, in the position it is uh, right now. Obviously, to clear the channel, you will have to move the dolly. They will not move the dolly because of the bridge entanglement at this time, especially as they're doing diving and trying to locate uh, the, the bodies of those who have been lost. So they don't want to move it. It's going to cause more problems. All right, this is the port of Baltimore from Marine Traffic. Uh, I'm going to bring you in here in a minute, but I'm actually going to zoom out here first, take you out in the larger Chesapeake Bay. Here you see the large anchorage just south of the Bay Bridge. This is ships waiting to get into Baltimore. There are actually more ships further down the bay uh, on the entrance. So I'm going to take you here into the bay and show you part of it. So here is the dolly. Here is the bridge. Uh, you'll notice Coast Guard vessels have a quarantine area around it. You cannot approach the area at this time. Uh, the Coast Guard has set up a security zone in and around the area. And so Dolly is, is right there impaled on that lower uh, um, southern uh, stanchion right there. Uh, Port of Baltimore, you'll see, going to zoom out here, and I'm going to show you a, a terminal map here in a minute. This is the Sparrows Point region, so there are some facilities that are outside the Patapsco River Bridge, but the vast majority of the facilities for the Port of Baltimore are on the other side here. And what we see here is quite a few vessels are going to be trapped in here. We've got a bulk ship down here that's going to be stuck in here. There's a container ship up against the berth. Uh, over at Dundalk, uh, another bulker over here. There's a general cargo ship uh, over here. And then there are four ships of the Maritime Administration's Ready Reserve Force. These are military vessels that can be used in, in terms of military sea lift. Uh, there's the Gary Gordon here. There's Antares and Denebola up here. And then there's the Cape Washington. Uh, the Cape Wrath, the fifth vessel that's usually up here, was returning, but uh, had not returned yet. So it's actually going to probably stage into the port of Norfolk and stand by. So this is a, a diagram here. It shows you a little bit more on the port here. So right here again, this is Trade Port Atlantic. This is the old Sparrows Point shipyard area here. This is the area that is outside. This is Dundalk Marine Terminal. Do you see the container cranes right here? Here is Seagret Terminal. Uh, it was Seagret from which uh, the Dolly had left. Over here, you have the coal piers. There's a series of coal piers. There are coal piers located right here. There are other coal piers down here. Here's the Fairfield and Atlantic Terminal down here. 
And then over here is Locust Point uh, Marine Terminal. Uh, this is the south side. The north side is up here. All of this on to the west of the bridge now is inaccessible. Smaller boats can get under the bridge once they clear it. But the main channel into uh, Baltimore, which runs right here, is now shut because of the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. So I want to go through the events that transpired the other day of 26 March when the Dolly left the Dundalk Terminal. She came off the berth here with two tugs, very common. You would see two tugs helping the vessel off, two McAllister tugs. The ship was moved into the stream and then proceeded down. And it's at this position right here when the ship is about two-thirds of a mile from the bridge uh, at 05.24.32 UTC time. It's a four-hour difference between uh, Baltimore and UTC time, so it was 1.24 in the morning. That's when the vessel lost power. So this clip is magnified and sped up. But here is Dolly right here. The Dundalk Terminal is right behind it. So you see these cranes right here. That is up on the Dundalk Terminal. So the ship had come off the berth, actually swung all the way around, out of frame here to the left, and now is coming back in. It is heading for, this is the southern pillar right here. This is the pillar they're going to hit. And it's heading for right under the center span of the bridge. And talking to engineers and other mariners i know we've come up with a couple of ideas here of what could have caused the power failure and that power of power failure could be caused by bad fuel getting into the engine it could have been caused by a cooling water blockage uh, it could have been an overload trip of the engine but whatever it was we see the ship lose power so i'm gonna go ahead and let this play here and here's the vessel maneuvering in and you see her go dark. So that's the exact position we saw the vessel in a few moments ago. So here's the ship moving again. We see it heading that way. And now we're going to have the lights come back on. And when the lights come back on, there's a couple of indicators here for us. So number one, uh, this doesn't seem to be the main propulsion coming on. One of the things that I noticed is the foremast light is not coming on. We've got the top light, we've got the run, we've got the running lights on, we've got lights along the side of the vessel, but we don't have the foremast light on. And that may be an indication that what we saw here was the generator kicking on. Uh, the ship has an emergency service generator that is above the water line, uh, usually in the after house. That's enough to get some power on. Not sure if they had enough power to operate the rudder at this point. If they did, they would be able to still use the momentum of the vessel and be able to steer the vessel. I don't think they have power for the rudder because what we're going to see here is the vessel is going to begin to turn with the current and with the wind southbound into the bridge. So here it is moving again. You see it beginning that movement. Now, if you notice right there, the light, the foremast light popped on. It was very quick, but the foremast light popped on. And we're seeing black smoke come out. That's usually an indication that they're dumping air to restart the diesel. This is a big kind of, of plume of air that is sent in. This is how you start a big marine diesel. And that could be the main engine that's kicking in at this time. And so now they may have the main engine coming back online at this moment, but you'll see the vessel has begun its swing. Go ahead and let this play. Still seeing that black smoke. We're seeing the vessel move. So notice how it's moving to the right there. And now you lose power again. Once again, the ship drops its power. And again, that could be the inherent issue that they didn't fix when they restarted the engine. So now the vessel is starting its move to the right. This looks much more pronounced than it is. I showed you in my video yesterday the track line here of the vessel in marine traffic. Uh, but this is a very gradual. It looks like it's, it's kind of steering, like turning into it, but it's a perspective error that you're seeing right here. So now the vessel is moving. We see it come back in. We're going to see the power come back on again. There's the power again even more black smoke coming in. It's at this point we believe that they may have the engine going astern because what you're going to see is the ship is going to stop its swing to the right and steady up straight and start swinging to the left to try to get back into the channel. It's moving more of the port here. So here's the vessel. You can see the stern still kicking out, but then it kind of slows down here and you get a head-on perspective of the vessel, and then the vessel will begin its shift over to the left, but by which point it's going to hit the uh, pillar. And that's where you see right there, you saw that kind of kick up of the smoke right there. 
that is where it hits and then it actually physically hits the bridge with the uh, top of the vessel. And so right here you see the smoke come up and then the, the bow here, the containers actually physically hit that piling and knocks the piling out. And because this is a continuous length bridge, when you knock out the one support, the entire bridge will collapse. Though this is for Synergy Energy, this is the group that owns the vessel and operates it for Maersk Lines. This is their update uh, as of March 26 at 1020 UTC. Owners and managers of Singapore flag container ship Dolly report the vessel collided with one of the pillars. Uh, all crew members, including the two pilots, we know there are two pilots. Usually if there's two pilots on board, one is a senior pilot, one is a junior pilot. Have been accounted for. There are no reports of injuries on the ship or pollution. Uh, Dolly has now been immobilized, has mobilized its qualified individual incident response team. It's working with the Coast Guard. Just some vessel information they included here. She has a capacity of 10,000 TEU. She is carrying on board 4,679 containers. It says TEU, but I think they mean containers. Uh, 116,851 deadweight tons. The crew is all Indian, 22 in total. The owner of the ship is Grace Ocean Private. Uh, limited uh, pulled up Grace Ocean Private Limited. Uh, it is a company in Singapore, uh, and so it is Singapore owned. I also want to pull up this. This is Equus, and so this is electronic quality shipping information system. It's a database that allows you to inspect vessels and their details. And if you look at the inspections of this vessel, this ship was inspected most recently on September 13th up in New York. It was a standard inspection. You can pull it up here for details and see what exactly happened. And you'll see that there were no detentions, no deficiencies at all with the vessel. Come back here. The ship was inspected down in Chile back in June. Uh, there was follow-up inspections because of some issues, but the issues they found were pretty minor. I mean, things like gauges that you couldn't read. So nothing too substantial. The ship has been inspected periodically under different memorandums of understanding. Uh, you'll see both in Tokyo and the South American, they've been inspected. So the ship's been inspected in Peru and Mexico and Panama, Colombia, Korea, all over the place, this ship has been inspected. Here's the information on the vessel itself. The ship manager is Synergy. The ISM, which is the individual ship manager, is Synergy. And then again, registered owner is Grace Ocean. The Singapore flag is a very good flag. Uh, this is not a flag where you usually have a lot of issues with it. The ship was under lease to Maersk Lines. So it was on a Maersk service. It had just completed a run up the east coast of the United States. It was heading to the Panama Canal and was heading over to Sri Lanka to the port of Colombo. The classification society is Japanese. Uh, uh, NK is the uh, classification. This is the third party entity that inspects the vessel. Uh, all these assets are going to be involved. The Singapore State Registry will be involved. NK for the classification society. Uh, India will be involved because there's Indian crew members on board. Uh, you're going to see, obviously, the inspection by the U.S. Coast Guard. The NTSB will probably go on board the vessel today. They, they avoided going on the vessel yesterday because of the ongoing rescue. Uh, we're going to see several things develop over the next couple of days. Number one, they're going to have to get the ship free from the wreckage. So that's going to be a movement that needs to be done. You're going to need to get the bridge off the vessel before you move it. Uh, and then you're going to bring assets in to start clearing the bridge, particularly between the two pillars across the main channel. That's going to be the focus for getting the bridge open. Of course, the recovery operation is ongoing as we speak. That is going to be the absolute priority to try to locate those who have been lost. And then the investigation takes place. And this is going to be a very long investigation, believe me. It's going to be Coast Guard and NTSB, a lot of parties involved, a lot of testimony. Uh, we're not going to know. Uh, I think uh, we're not going to hear, unfortunately, from the crew or the pilots. That just doesn't happen in these instances. So we're going to have to rely on information that comes out from various sources. So stay tuned to what's going on with shipping. Follow G Captain for news, and I will keep you as up to date as I can. Until our next episode, this is going to be Sal signing off. Please click like and subscribe and support the page if you can. Until our next video, Sal signing off.